two summers ago, we watched a movie called 365 Days, and it was really bad, but also a lot of fun. And luckily enough for us, they actually made a sequel. I know I'm like a month late at this point. I didn't know it had come out already, but I thought it'd be fun to watch it together. Quick recap from the first movie though, because it's definitely been a minute. The two people we follow through the original 365 Days are Massimo and Laura. Massimo's in his itzy era. He's a mafia boss. Then we have Laura, who he kidnapped and that's pretty much her whole personality. She's a sassy kidnap victim. Pathetic, you're the one that was shaking, sweetie, not me. But she's forced to date him and then eventually falls in love with him. And the movie spends the entire time trying to convince you that it's like a genuine connection and that they're actually in love and that she's not just like a kidnap victim experiencing Stockholm syndrome. But according to them, they are very much in love and they're about to get married. But then there's mafia tension. The girls are fighting. And we're actually left to assume that Laura's dead in a tunnel at the end of the movie because of some like planned car accident. And I know some of you guys might be sitting there going, Casey, there's no way in hell you were able to summarize a two hour long movie in two sentences. Like, I know you're missing shit. Trust me, I'm not. It's just because these two fuck every 30 seconds. Like that's the whole point of the movie. The sex scenes in this thing are many and long in between, and there's always somebody wailing in the background of them. Honestly, at this point though, the whole franchise just kind of comes off as a very long cologne commercial, which is actually convenient because speaking of cologne, this video is sponsored by Scentbird. Scentbird helps you discover your style and build your fragrance collection by changing the way that you discover, buy, and experience fragrance. One of my biggest gripes with trying out new scents traditionally is that it can often be really hard to experiment with a ton of them just because it either gets really expensive or the size of the sample bottle just doesn't really give me enough days to figure out if I actually like the scent or not. Scentbird, on the other hand, lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try each month for just $16. Every month you get to pick what you want, so there are no surprises, and they've got a huge range of different perfumes, colognes, and unisex options as well. With each fragrance, you get a 30-day supply, so that gives you a ton of time to test it out and see if you actually want to commit to a full-size bottle. And I've actually found that the bottles that Scentbird uses are really great for travel as well. Like, it's a really convenient size. It's not like some overwhelming, awkwardly shaped perfume bottle, but it's still has a ton of product in it. They have everything from big brands like Prada or Gucci to more niche lines like Skylar and Heretic. But you can also discover new fragrances by taking a simple quiz on Scentbird's website, where they help you find a fragrance based on your preferences, previous purchases, and quiz answers. This month I got four perfumes, and I definitely say out of the four, my favorites were Dolce by Dolce & Gabbana and Vetiver by Malin & Getz. Dolce is very floral and clean, which I think is really nice for spring. And I definitely say the Vetiver one is one that I like regardless of the season, just year round. It's very smoky and woody, kind of reminds me of a fireplace. I definitely recommend it if you love trying new scents or maybe you're trying to get out of your comfort zone and try new stuff. If you do end up trying it out, you can use my code KC55 for 55% off at Scentbird. It's just $7 for your first month and they're available in the US and Canada, so definitely check it out if you're interested. And thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring. I'm like oddly sentimental right now, which is kind of concerning. You know what? Who cares? Laura's got a new bob. She's given the girl from Ratatouille a bit. That's my new sister. I'm gonna defend her in all her stupidity this time around. I am a changed person. Little Miss Positivity. Oh, I don't have aunties. Hold on. I thought you were in a tunnel. Okay, yeah, I'm not going insane. Apparently they're just not addressing this. Um, Laura is very much alive and they're friendly wrestling before their wedding. You're sick people, you know that? Oh, she is so us coded. You know what though? I kind of appreciate that this time around they're just making it very obvious. Like first two minutes in, this is what you're getting the whole time. If you want any semblance of a plot, Go watch after. This is for the Netflix charts, not the art. Okay, it looks like we're finally bringing up the tunnel. Apparently she was pregnant in there. Sounds like a lot of shit went down. I wish we could have seen it. Unfortunately, this is one of those moments where I realize that I like actually have Twitter brain rot because the only thing I can picture right now is that stupid Dobby video. John and Kate's wedding could never though. Wait, William. Okay, don't get me wrong here. The wedding's really cute, everyone looks really happy, but nobody has spoken in like four minutes now. And they keep playing this song that sounds like bootlegged Sheeran. Like, is this supposed to be an artistic choice or are we in our mime era? I honestly wouldn't even mind that much if it wasn't for the fact that these songs sound like bottom tier Eurovision. Oh my God, guys, it's their wedding night. I wonder what they're gonna do. I'll do whatever I want with you. No. I'll do whatever I want with you. No, I'll do whatever I want to both of you. Like, put you in couples therapy. Aw, she made him a friendship bracelet. It's like nine in the morning right now. Why am I watching this? I just realized we're like 15 minutes in and he hasn't called her baby girl once. What's going on here? Okay, on the bright side, they've switched from like a bootleg Ed Sheeran vibe to something a bit more bootleg Ariana Grande. Do you think there should be some yes in there though? Like nobody else, yeah. yeah. So what you like, yeah. What you, what you like, yeah. yeah. But how do you want it again? 
Tiger Woods when he gets a hole in one. I do respect them for trying to make the most boring sport on planet Earth sexy though. It doesn't work at all, but I appreciate the attempt. I'm realizing that I would pay actual money to be in the writing room for the next one. Like, just to observe. I need to see the conversations that happen before scenes like this actually make it into the movie. Like he's deflowering her with a golf ball. What did they leave out? Also, if anybody was curious, uh, we're 20 minutes in, and I swear to God, I think combined, all the characters have spoken for like two minutes. This isn't Massimo and Laura, by the way. I thought that at first, but it's actually the two friends. I don't know why we're watching this. It looks like B-roll of one of those like food fetish TikToks. And do not hit me with that near vanilla shit because I don't want to dry rub myself with whipped cream. I think the best viewing experience for these movies though is to always pay attention to the guy playing Massimo because this man at all times is acting for his goddamn life. I'm not saying it's good acting, but this man is giving it his all. Like every fiber of his body right now is tense as shit. We're back to our normal life, baby girl. Okay, wait, I just realized the Bob's gone. Do we think this is symbolic? Like not to read too much into it, but I feel like there's a deeper meaning behind it all. He doesn't call her baby girl when she's got the Bob on. Bob's off, suddenly it's baby girl city. All I'm trying to say is that maybe this movie has an underground meaning that only true intellectuals would understand. And maybe I'm one of them. This is very much giving car commercial or maybe a prescription for ringworm. Unfortunately for us though, Laura and Massimo get in a fight because Laura doesn't like how overprotective her mafia boss husband is and she misses challenges. You've kidnapped me and this is sick, but I fell in love with you and then we are together because I decided. I'm gonna take a gamble here and assume that the guy that just walked into frame is supposed to be the new love interest because they are spending a solid minute doing this like close up montage of every single one of his body parts. I'm the new gardener, Nacho. Why is the gardener dressed like a backup dancer for Fifth Harmony? Clearly the gardener is gonna come up again at some point, but for now they start showing this Christmas party where Massimo ends up gifting Laura a clothing company, which like, I guess is nice, but also like, when has she ever said she wanted a clothing company? I'm starting to realize that I actually know nothing about this girl other than the fact that she bobs part-time and that she was kidnapped. I feel like I should know more. So, I know that you love work. And I want you to be free to do what you love. So I bought you Shein. Also, if you're curious what she got him for Christmas, she got him sex. Which like, yeah, I get it, but I don't know. Maybe we could have given him something more thoughtful, like a gift card to better help. I'm kidding. We want to get him real therapy. Okay, I guess they're still trying to sell us on this other couple though, because they will not stop showing them despite me not caring about them at all. But now they're shopping and they're girls, so who cares? Let's move on. I feel like they need to swap the soundtracks between Selling Sunset and this, because honestly, this doo-wop shit would make so much more sense for that show. And I feel like 365 days could really benefit from a little room room. I'm so hot, look at me, my fast car lyricism. Okay, like an hour in, we're finally getting some drama. Laura catches Massimo cheating on her, which, first of all, the nerve. Men actually aren't shit. You can't even trust the man who kidnapped you to stay faithful. I'm offended for her. I would be so pissed. She got kidnapped, forced to fall in love with a guy who calls her baby girl every two seconds, and then got cheated on? This is evil. You know what's the worst part though? They're gonna have some ridiculous, long ass explanation as to why you did it that makes him seem like a good person. No, babe, I didn't want to cheat on you. It's just, she's part of a different mafia and if I didn't sleep with her, she was gonna attack us. Like, you know what? Laura, get in the car, we're leaving. Obviously she's very upset about it all and she runs off at the gardener and I guess kind of starts her solar power era. Back over at Massimo's though, her mom is slapping him. I have no idea where is she. Which honestly, I feel like she could have slapped him a bit harder. But everyone over there is like scrambling to figure out where she went because she sent a text message being like, hey, I'm leaving and don't try to contact me because like I'm really pissed right now. And very conveniently, Massimo is absolutely clueless as to why she would run off. Uniamo le nostre forze. Oh, so she is Miss Mafia. Okay, but how are you blaming just her? Like, we saw what you did. Okay, well, technically you guys didn't, but I did. And you were a very willing participant. Back over on the island, though, the garden is doing his best nice guys impression. Why? Always good girls fall in love with bad guys. See, I think this has less to do with the whole good girls only go for bad guys thing and more to do with him like actually kidnapping her. I love how Massimo's been getting so much more pushback though from the characters for cheating versus kidnapping. Like go ahead, snatch whoever you want off the street and force them to fall in love with you, but I draw the line of cheating on them. 
Io la mia parte l'ho recitata in modo perfetto. Come se questo fosse difficile. E mica sa che massimo. They parent trapped her? You know what? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't think I have the mental bandwidth for this one. Why would he not tell her that not only does he have an evil brother, but he happens to look exactly like him? Like, how are these two married? They know nothing about each other. I have more confidence in couples from 90 Day Fiance. È sopravvissuto. Okay, question though. Who do we think would win in a fight? Him or Harden? Like, no question, Tessa would kick the shit out of Laura. I'm sorry, the Bob can only do so much, but this man, I feel like he would look at Harden and he just fold like a lawn chair. While Massimo's freaking out though, Laura's over on the beach doing great with her new gardener friend. They're like surfing and having fun. And the relationship's a lot healthier than hers with Massimo because while she didn't know anything about Massimo, she also doesn't know anything about this guy either. Then again, he didn't kidnap her, so that's like considerably better already. I am Marcelo Nacho Matos, son of Don Fernando Matos, the head of the local mafia. You cannot be serious. And if you think I would fall in love again with a guy who thinks he can have me just like that, you're absolutely wrong. Because I've learned from my mistakes. She's like, fool me once, shame on me. But if you think you're gonna fool me again, well, joke's on you. Because you're only like halfway there. Unless you buy me a dress or something. And I'm done with guys who think that they can do whatever they want. Okay, don't get me wrong here. Because like, regardless, I love this for her. But this would have been such a surf if she had the bob on. Like, this is very bob energy. After that, though, they have this, like, meeting of the mafias. I still have no fucking clue what these people actually do, but Massimo's acting down. Like, he had 45 seconds to act his way out of the third movie and move on to something else. Will that actually be happening? Probably not, but I appreciate the drama. These two clowns, though, managed to lose Laura, so they have to, like, join forces to go find her because she's gone missing. It takes them, like, 400 years because they're too busy strutting dramatically in slow motion. Like, I get this scene is supposed to be dramatic, but it's really not giving that. Like, maybe throw on a dance-off. I know Kim lips in there somewhere. Obviously, shit ends up hitting the fan, though. It turns out the whole thing was a huge setup by Massimo's evil twin brother. That's my evil twin! Also, I completely forgot about the kid's storyline, but that also comes out, so Massimo finds out that Laura was pregnant at one point. But then they all start dropping like flies, and I sound demented laughing at this, but like, what the hell? Like, can you guys stop brooding and call the ambulance? This girl's gonna like, actually die. I like the consistency though. Like, this is the second time they've ended a movie with Laura pretty much dead. I'm gonna be honest though, for a movie that's supposed to be about sex, there really wasn't that much this time around. Like, don't get me wrong, they definitely sprinkle in random sex scenes when it's obvious they have no idea how to progress the story further, but if anything, it was the music videos that they kept sliding in every four seconds that were overkill. Half the time it felt like you were watching a sexified in memoriam. On a fun scale of one to 10 though, I'd probably say it like sits at a four, just cause while it does have the potential to watch with friends and like poke fun at it, the sex scenes kind of make it a bit more awkward, so I feel like there are better movies for that experience. Hopefully you guys liked the video though. If you did, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. I've also got a second channel if you want to check that out, as well as some streams and all the other places you can find me outside of YouTube, I'll link down below. Don't forget, you can also use code KC55 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. All that info will be in the description box below. But otherwise, I really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.